What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light, a place where you're going to learn God's word is going to improve and transform your life. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of, of Realities by Pastor Chris. And today's title, we're going to be reviewing one of the articles um, titled The Power of His Word. And our theme scripture is from Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. I'll read the theme scripture and then we will get down and break down the scriptures and learn together. So I hope you're ready. Let's get started. Let's get started. It says, For the word of God, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. That's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, Amplified Classic Bible. Uh, let's read on the first paragraph. It says, The Bible gives the account of a certain man who was sick for 38 years and laid by the pool of Bethesda. At that pool was a rendezvous of broken humanity waiting for the stirring of water by an angel. The first person to get in after the water has been stirred got healed of whatever disease he had. However, this man hadn't been able to get in and when Jesus met him, he asked, Will thou be made whole? That's from John chapter 5 or 6. Wow, wow. Today's title, um, Today's scripture is really important. I mean, today's article, the power of his word. And I like how he describes the word of God. He said the word of God is alive and it's full of power. It's active. So it's not just words. These are not just empty words. They, there's a power to those words. It says it's full of, it's, it's full of power. It's alive. It's active and operative, energizing and effective. So these are just these are not just hollow words that God speaks. No, it says the, the word that God speaks. You know, interesting key word here is the word that God speaks. So the word has to be spoken. The spoken word that God speaks is, is alive and full of power. And, you know, I like this story about this dude that was lame and for 38 years. I mean, he was crippled for 38. He was sick. For, he said he was sick for 38 years. And he was laid by the pool, you know, and uh, they had this pool where, um, where uh, an angel of God, you know, let's read that scripture. That's from John chapter 5 and verse 6. And we can see the power of God. So let's just go read John chapter 5 verse 6. Um, before I explain that further, so let's just go there real quick. John chapter 5, 5 and verse 6. Right, uh, let's start from verse 2. So I can, he gives us a background of what this pool of Bethesda was and what the angel was doing when he came and started water. So I'm going to read on for verse 2. John chapter 5 verse 2. He says, Now they, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five pouches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. So like this was like a like a congregation of sick folks came into this place for a miracle. All kinds of sickness. He was saying blind, withered, uh, impotent. But they were just waiting for the moving of the water. They knew if the water is stirred up, that means an angel of God. Yeah, let me, I'm just getting ahead of myself. Let me just keep on reading. <laughs> they were saying, you know, waiting for the moving of water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then fast after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole or whatsoever disease he had. Isn't that amazing? He said, this angel went to this pool at a certain season and he just tied up the water. Whoever jumped in first, no matter what disease you had, no matter what problems you had, you were made, they said, whatever, whatsoever disease he had, they were made whole. Ain't it awesome? He said, this angel came in at a certain, at a certain season. Hmm, interesting. And then he goes on from verse 5 and says, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, 38 years, 30 and 8 years. I mean, for 38 years, he was informed. 
And then he says, when Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? That's just, he said, Jesus came in. Remember, they said the, the, an angel came in at that place at a certain time and he started up the water. Whoever jumped in got healed. But this time, Jesus comes in. <laughs> he's not he's not stirring no water. He, and the people don't recognize, hey, this is the master. This is God. They're waiting for the angels. Can you imagine? Everybody else is just waiting for an angel, just waiting for that angel. Even this dude has uh, been here for 38 years. It's like we're waiting for the angel to stop the water. But the greater than the angel, the one that was greater than any angel showed up. The son of God, who is God himself, came <laughs> came there at the pool. And he saw this guy that was in his... Um, sorry about the noise, by the way. Um, so he, he sees this guy that's been in, in this condition for 38 years. And he asks him, are you going to be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Man, that, hold on a second. That just gives me, that gives me an inkling. That means Jesus had chosen this dude to be healed. He's because he said, he said, he said he's been in that condition for 38 years. And he said, are you ready to be whole? Will you be made whole? But this guy thought, okay, let me just not go ahead of and say, and then, so Jesus said, will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step is down before me. Oh my God, did you understand what's going on? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Two seconds. Let's just go back to the top verse. He says, Man, I think this scripture is loaded. I know I'm, that's not the topic where I'm going, but I, I want to show you something. Um, he says from verse 4, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool. An angel went down there at a certain time in, into the pool, and he troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the trouble in the water, stepped in, was made whole. Was made whole. Not, notice the words. He was made whole or whatsoever disease he had. And then... He says, Jesus came, he saw that man lie, and he knew he had, he had been now a long time in that case, and he said, will thou be made whole? <laughs> and this dude thinks, oh, he's talking about, oh, are you going to jump in the water so you may be whole? He didn't know, this is the Son of God. This is the Master that's come to make you whole. It's, it's beyond an angel now. Anyway, and so he says, I don't have anyone that's, that's going to be able to to, to put me into the pool. Every time I try, someone else jumps before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. He didn't need to start any pull up. He didn't need to start any water. He didn't need to touch him. He just told him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately, the man was made whole. <laughs> and took up his bed, and walked on the same day was the Sabbath. There was no water to be stirred before the angels had to come in and you had to jump in. But now Jesus comes in and shows this is a new, this is a new period now. A new period of grace where God comes to you and he says, get up and walk. You need nothing, no contact. He just spoke words. And that's what we're talking about. The power, the power of God's word. The power, that's the title, the power of his word. He says, the theme, our theme scripture says, for the word of God, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energized, and effective. He didn't touch this dude. He says, anyway, let's keep on reading. From second paragraph, he said, rather than affirm right away what he wanted, that he wanted to be well, he started complaining to Jesus. That's when Jesus asked him, would thou be made whole? Rather than affirm right away he wanted to be well, he started complaining to Jesus, lamenting how there was no one, no one to help him into the pool. I was from five, the one we just read. We just read that scripture. No minding his complaints, the master said unto him, "Rise, take up thy bed and walk." That's John five eight. The Bible says, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. That's John five nine. 
Hmm. He goes on, he says, how come the man didn't complain this time, but acted the moment Jesus says, said, rise, take up your bed and walk. It reveals the power of God's word. There's something about the words of Jesus. He said in John 6, 6 chapter 6, verse 63, the word that I speak unto you, their spirit in their life. At the words of Jesus, life permeated the hitherto dead limbs and the paralyzed body of the man before he could think, and he was already standing, healed by the power of God. That's the power of the word of God in manifestation. Remember, he didn't even know who Jesus was at this time. That's from John chapter 12, verse 5 to 12, 15. It shows you, he says, the words that Jesus said, the words that I speak their spirit in life so when he told that man rise take up your bed and rock those words went into his limbs those words went into his body and gave him energy because we we, we, we said we, he said the word of god is active and full of power it says it goes deep into the marrows and to the bones dividing oh i want to show you that scripture in uh, king james version let's just read that scripture hebrews chapter 4 Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Let's just find that in the King James. The King James version. Kind of, I like how he puts it. 4 verse 12. Highlight there. It says, For the word of God is quick. That means it's powerful. Quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Do you see that? The word goes all the way deep into your spirit. And it can even separate between soul and spirit. It says, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of joints and marrows. <laughs> the word of God goes into your joints and your marrow. It goes into your soul and your spirit. And is a design of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Let's go back here. This is what happened to this man. You know, Jesus said, the words he speaks out. Jesus, when Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. That's from John chapter 6, verse 63. And so he said, at the words of Jesus, life permeated the hitherto dead limbs and paralyzed body of the man. Before he could think, he was already standing, healed by the power of God. So the world went through his bones. When he says, rise up, take up your bed and go home and walk. What did he tell him? He says, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Jesus spoke those words and those words went to his bones. Those words went to his limbs. Those words went to his body and he just stood up. <laughs> you know, anyway, let's just keep on writing. He says, the rhapsody, Pastor Chris says, in several, in several of our healing meetings, this is Pastor Chris saying, People testify of a voice telling them to walk or to do what they hitherto could not do due to sickness, disease, or infirmity of the body. The moment they acted on the word, they heard. The moment the, the, the moment they acted on the word, they heard a miracle ensued, irrespective of the case. They didn't have they didn't have to reason out the voice. They knew it was from God and acted accordingly from the spirit. From the expert and it's amazing if you watched um, pastor chris videos uh the man of god healing services or healing school you can just see how miracles that take place when just people from hearing listening to the word and they get inspired and they hear that voice from the word the spirit of god speaks to them and they act on that voice and a miracle takes place just like this dude that was lame for 38 years he had, he was complaining to jesus think about it he was just complaining to Jesus. And Jesus said, Yo, rise up, take your bed and walk and go home. And a miracle took place. The words were powerful enough to produce a miracle, to heal his body, to get to get him up. Um, this reminds me of another story too. A miracle that took place. Uh, let me show you that scripture if I can find it. Oh, it reminds me of another story, which is powerful too. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> Stretch forth. Let me... Let me, hold on, let me find this. So yeah, this is another beautiful miracle from the power of Jesus' word, the power of the word. So it's from, I'm reading the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 6. Let's just read this uh, from verse 6. It says, And it came to pass also on another Sabbath 
that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man whose right hand was withered. That means he had like one of those, his hands was shrinked or was kind of withered away, shrinked. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they may find an accusation against him. Can you believe that he's performing a miracle? They're just caring about the Sabbath. That's a, that's interesting. But he knew their thoughts. I'm reading from verse eight. He knew their thoughts and said to the man, which had the withered hand, this man's hand was short and shrink. That's what it means. He told him, rise up and stand forth in the midst. Okay, and it's to um. So Jesus talks to the man, he says, Rise up, stand forth in the midst, and he arose and stood forth. Then Jesus then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing, is it lawful on the on the Sabbath day to do good or do evil, to save life or destroy it? Or destroy it. And looking around about upon him, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he did, and he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. <laughs> Jesus did not touch this dude. Look, he said, he told his man. Because they were trying to find an accusation, or oh, are you going to heal this man on Sabbath? His hand was withered. It was kind of shrink. It was a short hand. Jesus did not touch this dude. He said, rise up, and he stand forth in the midst. And he, and he, said, and he looks around, and he, and he asks a question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? They didn't answer him anyway. And he speaks to the man. He says, stretch forth thy hand. I mean, if this dude could have done this before, he could have done it. Why? He didn't need Jesus to tell him that. If he was like, oh, all I need to do is stretch forth my hand. Oh, duh, I should have done that ages ago. I'll be healed. But no, these were different words. These were full of power and life. He said, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored whole as the other one. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway, let's finish reading this together. Uh, let me read the last paragraph. Um, that's the way to respond to God's word. It is, it is from and with your spirit. God's word is addressed to the human spirit, not to the head or the mind. He knows, he knows that the word in your spirit mixed with faith will surely produce results. Amen. Amen. All righty. I want us to take this prayer together. I want you to say this prayer out loud, repeat it out loud. It will change your life. When you speak God's word, it transforms your word. The word of God is in the speaking. So say this prayer out loud and bless your day and walk in victory. Just say this after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the ability and the power inherent in your word, which produces in my life and circumstances what it talks about. I'm making progress from glory to glory. By your word, in Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. And you can read further studies today. A scripture for you to read for today. Read Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10 to 11. And read the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Those two scriptures for today. That will bless you. Alrighty, I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. Um, If you have any questions, any comments, leave it in the comment section. And if you're following a one-year Bible plan or two-year plan, the scripture's right there for you to pick, whichever suits you, whichever plan that works for you. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you've not, because I release a video every day and we study God's Word. It's going to change your life. So it's important for you to subscribe so you can get notifications and not miss a video. And I would really appreciate it if you share this video to your friends or uh, social networks. Uh, that, would really, that would be really great. And I want to give a chance to someone that's not born again. If you're not born again, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is your day to receive salvation for your soul. The Word of God will change your life. So I'm going to lead you into a prayer of salvation. Just say this after me. Repeat it out. Oh, Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe He died for me and God raised Him from the dead. I believe He's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God forevermore. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer, congratulations. You're born again. Simple as that. Leave me a comment so I can know you said this prayer, so I can respond to you as soon as I can. Subscribe to this channel if you have not. Until tomorrow, be victorious and prosperous in all you do. It's been your boy, Mundus.
God bless you.